know I'm biased. I know I'm biased, but that intro music never gets old for me. <laughs> Welcome. This is episode number 39 of Reclaim Today. And I'm Jim Groom. I'm joined by my colleague, Taylor Jaden. And we have the good fortune of talking today to Paul Hibbets, who's behind Grav and Doxify and many other things. And Paul, why don't you introduce yourself and uh, we'll get started talking about some of the awesome flat fly madness you've been creating. Thank you so much, Jim. Great to be here. Awesome for sure. Um, well, yeah, a little bit of background about me then, I guess. Uh, I'm a, an interaction designer from way back. I started actually on the black and white Mac in like the dark times or the enlightened times, maybe you'd say in 1989. And I uh, basically have been doing a lot of UX consulting over the years and teaching user interface design. And these two things kind of met, as you can imagine, when my interest in open source really started to happen maybe about maybe seven years ago. And that led me into the path that uh, you just mentioned, Jim, about Grav and Doxify and my interest in open education and open publishing. So that's a little bit about me. Now, do you teach currently um, at Simon Fraser University? For some reason, I associate you with Simon Fraser. Am I wrong? No, you are, you are totally right. I've actually taught at SFU for many years. I've taught at a few other schools around town, but mostly SFU. Uh, I've last taught online. I did a lot of online courses by design uh, during and after COVID. Um, but my last course I've taught was actually summer 2022. And now, you know, I'm taking a bit of a break, uh, a lot of teaching in a short amount of time there and getting to focus more on my open source work, which has been really awesome to do. So... Let me ask you, I'm going to, you know, I'm sure Taylor will will ask intelligent questions, but let me start off with the base. Like I'm least common denominator. That's that's why they bring me in. So I am familiar with your work for years. Pretty much when you started, um, I was familiar with an application called Grav and Grav was, and correct me, I, as I know you will if I'm wrong, a flat file kind of um publishing platform, CMS, if you will, mm -hmm. um, that made it easy writing in Markdown to publish sites. And I was very impressed with how you took that and then started to integrate it with a kind of suite of templates that I believe you are running through GitHub to make it a kind of fully sweet, predefined kind of experience for the author. Is that correct? And has that been is Grav been the beginning of what is a process that you have been building out over the last several years? Definitely, definitely. I mean, I ran across Grav and it was a beta, I think maybe in like 2015. And uh, I'll tell you the key thing. The key event for me, Andy Miller, who actually was one of the core developers of Joomla, he is really the founder of Grav. And there's a small Grav team around Andy as well. Uh, in either a blog post or an interview or, you know, I can't exactly remember where it was. Andy said the following phrase, which really put the light on for me in terms of a direction I want to go. And Andy said uh, he saw Grav as a renderer for Git. And, and when you think about a renderer for Git, I mean, look at the traction that actually has gotten since around 2015. With all these static file generators, uh, Grav is unique in that it's a dynamic CMS, but it is a flat file CMS, works on files. And, you know, Markdown is definitely not for everybody, and nor is Markdown perfect. But I've yet to see a format that's as widely integrated and used and transferable as Markdown yet. I'm always looking for it, but I haven't seen it yet. Um, so anyway, so that was really the basis. And uh, luckily, you know, I did some years of computer science back in the day. I've always been technically inclined. And it was a slow process, but I started to kind of reamp my skills as a as a programmer, if you will, and got it into Grav. And just as you said, Jim, wanted to start to kind of widen the audience for Grav. Like Grav is a great or CMS fairly friendly platform. It's a lot for an educator or a publisher with a lot of technical skills to take on. So the idea there was to create these pre-formatted hubs, kits, if you will, uh, for people to be able to ramp up easier. It's still only for more technical, like curious, savvy folks still, but the bar I was able to lower to let more people kind of try it out. 
Well, that, and that makes a ton of sense, I think, kind of leading into some of the work that you've been doing around Doxify this. I mean, because you're saying Grav as a renderer for Git. Well, that's Grav is, Grav is an application you run and hosting, and it uses PHP, right? Um, and Doxify is doing that in a kind of a totally different way, right? Um, and a different level sort of um, technology-wise. So... Um, I, I I think it's that that I will say the 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 kits that you were talking about the the course hubs and stuff is kind of how I first became familiar with your work too in 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 Grav originally um, and I I've used a couple of them myself for various things so they're they're really well done and it's it's cool for me to see you kind of extend that work out to Doxify so you kind of want to talk about how you because I I hadn't heard of Doxify until I saw what you're doing with Doxify this either. So I'm kind of oh, curious okay. how you found that. Sure, sure. So, of course, you know, the thing to do is whenever you're working in open source, I think, is that you have to be aware of what else is happening around you and how you can kind of take advantage of that and pivot whenever you can. And I think it might have been like 2020 odd. I ran across something called Doxify. And uh, much like my Andy Miller quote, uh, the, the, the moment of enlightenment for me with Doxify is that almost like unlike any other static file generator out there, Doxify does not have a build process. I'll be honest, I tried to get Hugo going, Jekyll, blah, blah, blah. You know, those are beyond me, to be honest. Um, but Doxify was able to take markdown files and dynamically render it with no build process and no server required. Um, and, yeah. and it was able to do that. And it was like, that was like, okay, this looks like an interesting tool. I, I want to widen my audience. I found even for tech savvy educators and publishers, like I know Reclaim provides awesome hosting, but for a lot of instructors at universities, they just don't have access to a modern PHP server still. And so, yeah. you know, that was a huge barrier I found with people adopting Grav. So Doxify, oh, I, you don't need a server. You can even host it for free on GitHub pages. We'll talk more about that later. But it was that dynamic build process, or I should actually say no build process. It's dynamically transforming in the front end, which is very unique, Markdown into HTML. Um, and so that led me to create a set of Doxify starter kits, where now for, when it took like a 10 minute for a full install and set up with Grab with Git Sync, I could demo that in like 30 to 45 seconds, cloning a GitHub pages site, setting it to one parameter and getting it up and running. But still, GitHub pages, server config, what do I need to do? Uh, and so eventually that's where I came up uh, to thinking about how can I even lower that barrier? So again, here comes a seminal event, uh, Bo Shaw, posted an issue on the Doxify GitHub uh, repo. And he shared some code that allowed you to remotely render a markdown file external from your Doxify instance. I saw that and it's like, okay, so now I can go from having a PHP server to having a GitHub pages site config to no website config required all you need is a single markdown file. You can have a single page course website or an article or even a multiple page site in literally two steps, basically. Um, this is where I want to go next. And that was the idea of Doxify this. Yeah, it, it's interesting to me thinking of these things on, on a continuum, like kind of how you were describing there, right? Like on one side, what do you need? You need a grab, you need a uh, domain name, you need hosting that supports PHP, a modern version of PHP, as you said. Um, yeah. You don't need a database, which is cool. Right. Um, and then you need the technical know how to use it, right? And in the middle, maybe, Doxify, you need hosting, could be GitHub pages, you do need a domain name, could be uh, other hosting too, Re you could do it on Reclaim um, in other places. And then Doxify this, you don't even need a domain name necessarily. You don't even you need hosting, but of just a single file, and that could be a lot of different places. Um, to so it gets easier and easier. And then what you know, what does that allow people to do with it? I think is the is the does becomes the, the interesting part. Does Doxify get hosted on GitHub? Meaning doc. Let me get it right. Doxify this. 
Is that, do you need to have a GitHub account to host that one page or it doesn't matter? Oh, so I host it because there's, there's docsifythis.net. So a little bit more uh, background. Docsify this is actually a, a collection of, of you know, JavaScript, right? Based on Docsify. You could host your own version of Docsify this on Reclaim. And you, it could be called Docsify Reclaim this, whatever you want, right? <laughs> um, so this is also part, part of my philosophy is that you need transportability you need to be able to move with your content and, and control that content. So things you can do, for instance, you can actually go to GitHub today, clone Doxify This, and run your own Doxify This server. You can mm -hmm. even limit the source domain URLs to render files. So you can have a little bit of protection that, you know, you, what files are being rendered by your own server, right? Um, but it gets more interesting than that. Because of Markdown again, what you can do is if you will grow Doxify this, you want more control over you know, your CSS, your presentation, you can actually then move your Markdown files to a full Doxify instance and have your own Doxify instance. And uh, once we get into a few demos today, if you'd like, I can show you that you can almost have basically 100% fidelity between a Doxify this page and a Doxify starter kit page. So there's no penalty, you can easily go up in complexity if you need more customization and you can go back down. You're not, it's not a one-way road, it's a two-way road. So just like my journey, if you wanted more and more complex markdown publishing, you could literally start with Doxify this, publish a single markdown page, turn that page into a site, want more customization, move those markdown files to a Doxify. Uh, instance, have complete control over that. And hey, if you wanted to, you could even then go to a Grav platform and have a huge amount of control and customization over the site. Because Doxify is really a documentation generator. So it, you know, it has very limited styling. Uh, or, and, and so if you need to go beyond that, you know, you need to look at another platform. But you could do it because you can move your content around. It's files, it's markdown, uh, and again, I think that's a really valuable component of of the kind of um, approach. And crucially, going between Doxify this and uh, Doxify, right? Uh, not only do you are you able to move your content around, you really don't even have to change it, right? Because like it's literally just marked down all you'd be changing is sort of where am i putting these files and some of the doxify like uh parameters and stuff around it right so that's the kind of really cool thing to me because it's really easy to say like oh yeah you can take markdown and put it anywhere it's like mm, things do interpret markdown differently right like yeah. theoretically that's not how it's supposed to work but it is how it works but the cool thing with this is it's all sort of Doxify under the hood. So if it looks one way on Doxify yeah. this, it should your images will work the same way over here too. Th that's right. And in particular, it's designed by intent with my starter kits. So all the, I have little CSS helpers, so you can have like, you know, time bit badges and you can have responsive videos and Google Slides and you can have, you know, font awesome embeds and things like that. That's all available on the starter kits too. So literally, as you say, Taylor, if you go from Doxify this to Doxify, one of my starter kits in particular, no rework. Everything is there for you. Um, and then of course you have complete control after the, at that point with your own Doxify instance to add your own CSS and stuff like that. Cool. I think we're ready for a demo, Paul. I okay. am blown away and yet there's more. The flat <laughs> file empire. <laughs> okay, all right. So let me uh, share up a, a Firefox browser I've got with some content that we can look at and we can kind of show you guys can shop around and see what you'd like to see and all that kind of stuff. So give me one this second awesome. here yeah. and I will set that up. And if you have any problem sharing the screen, it's Taylor's fault, just hey. to be clear. <laughs> all right. Thanks for taking that, Taylor. I'll okay. that. <laughs> oh, look, it worked perfectly. Now we get to... Now, <laughs> now I, it's Taylor's celebration. <laughs> Okay, so I take it you guys can see the screen then? Yes. Yes. Awesome. Um, so I'll, I'll give you a little overview of what we have, and then you know you can let me know what you want to explore and what you want to see.
So uh, basically, I've got uh, four little uh, groups of content we can look at. We've actually done a pretty good job of talking about this overview so far, but maybe I'd like to show you one or two things, like actually bring up Doxify this and, or bring up a Doxify starter kit, and then you can compare the two. Um, then I've got some pre-built templates uh, that I've created. And the cool thing is, what are these templates? They're just markdown files. So that's pretty interesting. Uh, then I've got from various folks around the web uh, and a few of my own examples of sites that have been built and pages that have been built and things like that in different contexts. You might recognize a name or two in there. Um, and then I've got a little section on the flexibility of uh, markdown content workflows and apps. Because again, since Grab, Doxify, and Doxify This are all based with markdown files, you can leverage the, uh, the universe, if you will, of markdown workflows and apps that are available. So you can really customize your own kind of workflow and, and environment. So uh, what do you think? Should I start off with a little demo of uh, a Doxify starter kit and then look at Doxify This? Or will you tell me? That sounds great to me. Because okay. I'd love to get like anchored in Doxify this and the starter kit because Taylor knows Doxify better than I do. Gotcha. Okay, great. So, um, you know, of course, it all starts with Doxify and it's got, I think it just had 24,000 stars on GitHub. Uh, interesting story about Doxify. The original maintainer kind of moved on with the project, but uh, the project had such great pickup that the community rallied around the project and it's a really healthy, actively released project, which is really important uh, in many ways, I'm sure you can appreciate. But one thing I should mention too is sustainability. Like whenever you take on an open source project, uh, you got to think about sustainability. And literally what my guidelines are is that, you know, for both my Doxify starter kit work and even Doxify this, I'm only looking at around like roughly a thousand lines of JavaScript. Um, and so it's a pretty manageable project for someone on my own, uh, someone on their own. Okay. So let's dive right in. Uh, this is an example, Doxify uh, Open Course Starter Kit. Uh, what it is basically is a collection of file. So kind of like what Grab would have as well. You can see here, we've got a sidebar, we've got a home screen, uh, we've got some modules. So that's basically what every Doxify site will look like. It's a collection of markdown files. And then uh, on the local instance here, there's a GitHub Pages uh, site set up that will then present that content using Doxify. So again, no build process, no static HTML pages are created on the server side. Uh, this is all dynamically rendered in your browser. Uh, and so we can look at a schedule page, for instance. Uh, we can look at a topics page. We can go look into a week. Um, you know. It, uh, Again, it's Markdown, but you can embed other objects. So of course, I've got Google Slides there. I've got an image. You can do um, H5P embeds as well. Uh, you can do external reading files, like a, a preview with the embed of a, of a graphic. Um, so it's pretty flexible. Um, it's pretty fast to render, as you can see here. And again, it's all done on the front end. Uh, but the really cool thing is, is if we go down the page, we see this little link. So this link can be automatically generated on every page if you want it to help collaboration, right? So you can even have your students, if they're tech savvy, contribute suggestions for improvement. If you have a course worked with multiple authors um, and you just leverage GitHub for that collaboration. So tapping on that link will take you to the actual file. And then again, you can edit and all that kind of stuff. And that's basically what every Doxify site will look like. Again, it's usually in a folder called Docs, and in that folder are all your pages, and it's rendered uh, dynamically at runtime. Um, and so over the, the period of time I was working with Doxify, my starter kits, I created a single core starter kit, a multiple core starter kit, and a kind of open publishing starter kit, kind of like you know whatever content you want to present uh, would be in that. And so that brings us to Doxify This. So like I said, the interesting thing is, is Doxify This is not just a web app. It is an open source project on GitHub that you can clone. So right away, you have the flexibility of your taking control of your files being rendered 
by having your own instance of docs by this, if you want to. But again, I want to make it so users don't have to do that, so they can just use my provided free docsifythis.net instance. Um, and basically, you know, you render a file by giving it URL. L let's try this out. Let's just randomly go back to our open core starter kit. Let's randomly pick a file like uh, module one, take that URL from GitHub, go to docs by this, paste that page in, and press that publish button. And there you go. That's the page as rendered by Doxify this. No website set up, no uh, configuration necessary. All you need to do is A, have a URL of a markdown file, B, press a button, and you get a responsive page. Now you can do things to that page, right? You can, uh, let's say, add a little table of contents to that page where it will display on the left-hand side. So you can give students a nice way to quicker, quickly jump into content. Uh, you could also, use the Doxify sidebar instead, where the Doxify sidebar is collapsible and you can bring it up forward again and you can tap on it and it'll even highlight as you move down the page or up the page. And you can include an edit this page link. And if you really want to, you can even look at all these additional options. You can change the name of your tab, you can change your font, you can change your link color. I'll show you why you might want to do that later. So it's, it's a tool that by design is trying to make it as easy as possible to get something, right? Like a web page. But then you can, oh, yeah, I can customize that web page a little bit. Oh, and then I can even customize it further if I want to. It's really up, up, to, uh, up to the user of the site. Um, one other thing to show you is that uh, with Doxify This, there's also this guide I've been working on, publishing with Doxify This which you can tap on, which gives you an introduction to Markdown Publishing using the open source docs by this project. And you can tap to read the guide and you can read a bit more about Markdown and publishing with Markdown. And guess what? This guide is built with and rendered by Docsify This itself. So it was a great kind of testing ground to make sure that you could actually use Docsify This for its intended purpose of, like I said, one of its great purposes actually is to provide documentation for software projects. It's awesome that way because many software developers are familiar with GitHub, Markdown, and so it's a natural. So why don't I uh, pause my demo there and see if uh, you folks have any questions or comments so far. I mean, I I'm sure, again, I'll let Taylor speak after me, but I'm blown away just by you put the URL into the markdown file and then you get a URL back with a page done. And it's like, take the URL, go. And like, I didn't realize like it is so seamless. It, it kind of reminds me of like Google Docs without the evil empire element. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's just like independent. You have the URL. Again, you can take it and put it into your own Docsify this because it's just a URL, right? It's it's a beautiful kind of open standard um, of moving that. And obviously, I don't know if about Markdown to say the the uh, formatting and the styling that you and Ta uh, Taylor were talking about, but it's super compelling to me how simple that demo was. I think there's a lot there in terms of its simplicity. Thank you. And you, you bring up a good point. Another unique aspect of it is you, you maintain control and location of your content. So at no point are you uploading your content to a server who knows where. You're not doing that. You actually can have your own, like you could, if you're hosted on Reclaim Hosting, you could store your markdown files on Reclaim Hosting if you wanted to, right? Mm -hmm. And pass that source URL and use Docs by this to render that. Sure. Or you could, in my case, I store most of my files on GitHub. You could use Codeberg. You could use other platforms. Um, and you can even move. OK, so here's one. You can even move where your content is and just change that URL for Docs by this. You break nothing, right? Mm -hmm. um, but then again, you know, if the day comes where you want even more customization, you want even more control, you could run your own instance. But by design, it's, it's really made so you don't really have to for the most part, right? You, I really want to support people just using this open source, open uh, access uh, renderer of docs by this.net. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm such a big fan of 
uh, tools like this where you can sort of leverage a platform like GitHub for what it's good for, but not be bound by it, right? So like like you said, you, you've got most of your stuff on GitHub. You know, I use GitHub. Well, we use GitHub for, for most of our Git things at Reclaim Hosting. But, you know, for example, we recently had a, a couple folks in our forum ask about like, hey, I want to move... The, um, the, in their case, they were talking about Jekyll sites, but they wanted to get off of GitHub for, you know, all the reasons you might want to, right? Like, I just don't want to be bound by Microsoft or whatever. Um, and so they were hosting Git repositories in cPanel, which is a thing that cPanel can do. Um, right, and right. so, you know, theoretically, it's now it, it is not as flashy as GitHub, and it does not have all the features in terms of like, you know, um, a nice web interface. It, it has a web interface, but it's not pretty. Um, but you can do it, and there may be reasons why you might want to do it, and you don't have to start over from scratch. You're really just truly changing a URL, as you said. And kind of on the flip side of that, for me, that I think is equally as exciting is not only is your where your content coming from uh, portable, but also what you do with it. I think is is cool. So. One of the one of the things that I'm not a fan of for for Docsify this at first until I realized what what this meant and what I could do with it is okay well that's cool but I get this nasty long URL which is inherent mm -hmm. to what you're trying to do which is like yeah but that means you don't have to host it and you you can configure it by changing parts of the URL and that's all cool but then I've seen folks like like Alan Levine use it for documentation of splots. Where he's mm -hmm. taking a Doxify this URL and embedding it in a WordPress site, so that he gets kind of both, right? He he gets to have this WordPress site and control all the things around it, but then have all of the content on a particular page just come right from GitHub, basically, and have only one source of truth for you know that. And so, like, once you decouple all of these things in the way that you have with Doxify this. Really, I think maybe the the biggest limitations here are Markdown itself, which I think Markdown is great, but you know you, there's something to learn about it, and you mm -hmm. have to decide how yep. you want to edit it, of course. But I think that's a a problem that people can wrap their heads around. And then your only limitation is okay, well, what do you want to do with it? Is it is it is you want to use this URL? You can embed it somewhere. You can put it in like Canvas, like um like you've done in some of your demos. Are you gonna host it yourself? Right? It's it's tremendously exciting to me because I think you get a, a lot more ease of use than a lot of these other platforms would would have, but without being locked into any one particular thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and being able to reuse content in multiple locations that's another key aspect of of this approach is that you know uh, you can have it as a standalone URL website. You could have it embedded in a Canvas course. You can have it embedded in a WordPress theme. Uh, and you can reuse the same content and only edit once, display multiple times. Um, and so here's one last little quick uh, demo on that page. Uh, not trying to you know, I could warm the, uh, the home team here. But uh, here is a customized Docs by this web server Post it on, you got it, my own domain with Reclaim Hosting. So this is an example of what I was saying, is that um, you know, if I go back to my other instance and I copy that URL and move it over here, this is now being rendered um, through my hibbitsdesign.org site on Reclaim, but it's my own Doctify This instance. So now I could actually go in and I could customize all the CSS I wanted. I could limit the, 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 the markdown, remote markdown files to certain domains, um, anything like that I wanted to. Uh, certainly this is an advanced scenario, but just wanted to show you that it is a functioning scenario where I literally moved an instance and made a new instance of Doctor like this on Reclaim Hosting, and I'm able to then use that URL rather than the docsbythis.net URL that you saw earlier. So I'm going to ask you a question, Paul and Taylor, because you're both, you know, we, let me give you a kind of real world example. We provide documentation for various schools on domain of one's own. Right now we do that in a WordPress site and it's not updated as often as it should be. And they're individual WordPress sites. So 
there was X amount of them, not all one being, you know, syndicated or shared. And I remember back in the days of MediaWiki, there was this cool term and technology that was bandied around a bit called transclusion. Mm -hmm. And the idea was you would take one part of one wiki article and be able to share it in other instances, whether it's a blog or it's kind of taking a piece of code or a piece of mm. text and then putting it in other places and in different contexts maybe, but not losing the original, which was edited and shared from one. And that's something we've been struggling with when it's trying to give people access to the documentation for their, say, domain of one's own instance, but they need to customize it to their needs, right? They need to have their own screenshots. They need to have their own text, but they probably want a, a template to work from, right? Rather than starting from scratch. And I know we've been circling around this question for a while, Taylor, and Tim and I back when we were playing with um, not MediaWiki, but what was the other wiki that Mike Caulfield was talking about? Um, not smallest federated wiki, but the one uh, DocuWiki. And so like trying to figure out how to do documentation in DocuWiki and still it couldn't do it. So is Doxify or some version of what you're doing here uh, get us closer to a possibility like that? Or am I off base? I think in some ways, but to be honest, I think more at the page level versus chunks of pages. So, so the, the scenario you described to me where they would have some common content, but then they'd want to change that to their own screenshots. Like, so that's yeah. not where I would see Docsify working really well for you. I mean, it is going to be marked down. You could probably do some things like that, but personally, it doesn't sound like a really good fit. But if it's page based, you know, then of course you could share one page with multiple people. And then if there was customization required, that would be on another page. You see what I mean? So, yeah. So I think that probably that use case would be probably beyond Doxify, I would think. Um, but, yeah. But, but, but this idea of transclusion, which is something Alan Levine also talks about, uh, is, you know, the ability of having one document displayed in multiple platforms, scenarios, and situations. That in itself is definitely a step forward to help people maximize the value of something that they have uh, in terms of their content. And, and I, I think there is a path to do some of what you're talking about, Jim, like my, my kind of idea for this, and it, not all of it would be as easy as I would like for the, for the person making modifications, but say we had a GitHub repository or whatever, a Git repo somewhere um, that people with all of our standard documentation, basically the stuff you see at stateu.org slash docs, what we could do is use, build that out as Docsify documentation and, you know, throw it wherever they want or use something like Docsify this potentially and like embed it someplace. But then what that would allow the admin to do is as they make changes, those could be tracked by Git, right? And there, I kind of view this two ways. So if you have an admin who's like, yes, uh, give me Git and I can go with it from there, then great. Basically they can use Git and like the features of comparing across repositories and things like that to kind of say like, oh, this has been, Reclaim has made some updates over here and I can pull some of those into my repository. So they could, you know, fork our repository basically. And that would kind of be a solution. The problem with that for me is that requires knowledge of Git and Git isn't really that easy to use for me or most people, I think. So I think the second thing it would offer and maybe a, a simpler path for most people would just be to say that they can still take our, our documentation and see what has changed, <laughs> you know, cause right now what we tell people is, oh, go to stateu.org and just like look at it. Well unless you want to look through all of it, that's not really easy to do. And like literally with a fine, you know, literally pick through it line by line. Again, you could use uh, Git and we could, um, but you don't have to use all of its capability, but you could use Git to leverage and say, this is how our version is different. These are the places I've changed it. And then use that information to inform what you're going to update. And I think that could be a path forward. 
Um, the other thing there too is it does allow some easier things like if folks really just truly want our documentation, but their images, you could take your own screenshots, name them the same thing and put them in the same folder and bam, now yours have your customized screenshots. Um, so it's none of it is ideal, right? None of it is like um, what I would want is some kind of thing that could manage and tell people like, ah, Reclaim has made these changes. Would you like to ch merge them in and have this nice, really nice design interface? It's like, no, it's not gonna be quite as simple, but if you think of what the words I just used, that is what Git does, right? Like <laughs> on some level. So I think most of the, the admins that we're hearing from that want this are folks who maybe, if they really want that capability, now they could leverage Git if it, if it lived in a GitHub repository. Um, and for folks that don't, they still have an interface to, to at least see what has changed and we could we could help them use that. Um, and they can even play around with like, okay, well, I can, because this is just a folder, right, with some, with, with an index.html file and some markdown files, I can literally just copy this and make my changes and that's my development site, right? Like, uh, and you know, they don't have to install a separate WordPress and have, you know, um, not that that's that hard to do on something like Reclaim, but but they can make those changes easily and and get our updated documentation easily and we could we could show them how to do that. It's not a perfect solution, but I think it's um, significantly better than what we have right now, which is where basically folks say, can I get the newest version? And we say, yes, we'll do that for you. But they have to ask and they have to know <laughs> that, that that's the process. You're muted, Jim. <laughs> Professional. Um, that's one <laughs> of the reasons why I, I, I'm excited about Docsify. Just looking at it, it's like the idea that you've taken documentation and framed out the ability to make it that easy to publish and share um, does excite me about like, are we moving towards a space where, you know, that becomes a little bit more communal and wiki-like, you know, for doing some of the projects. But um, I'm also interested in another piece that I saw in one of your other screenshots dealing with different editors and like the embedding across some of that stuff, because we had someone at Reclaim Open, Brian Olin died talking about hacks and he talks all about the editor as decoupled. And I'm wondering, like, what does that look like in terms of some of the questions around different, you know, publishing platforms, editing, embedding? How does that process work in Docsify? Gotcha. Great, great question. So here again is where uh, Docsify and Docsify this uh, benefit from the Markdown Git ecosystem, right? Um, so if we go over to take a look at uh, this a little bit more in detail, I've got a couple of diagrams. I can show you some, some example tools of different ways and workflows that you can use. Um, so let's look at the most basic kind of the most basic setup you could do with Docsify. This is you just store your Markdown files on on a, on your own web server or a web server, and you uh, render these pages using Docsify. This and you can edit your pages uh, on your desktop, let's say, and, and push them to your web server. Um, it's a little bit of a manual process, but it's possible. And um, excuse me, and it's the probably the, the most simple kind of workflow that you can see. But where Docsify this really brings benefit is when you couple it with you know the power of Git. And so here, what you can see is that if you store your Markdown files on your GitHub repository, you can, for instance, have people just use the web editor of GitHub to propose changes to your content. You can use a program like GitHub Desktop, uh, which by the way is my number one way to work with content hosted on GitHub or any Git repository. It, you don't need scripting knowledge. It's a simple point and click application. And Taylor, you know, if you, you've probably used this, but GitHub Desktop will highlight changes for you automatically in a very friendly way to look at it, uh, which is awesome for less technical savvy people who still want to use the power of Git in the back end, right? to update and modify content. So coupling Docsify this files with GitHub repository, you can then, like I said, 
have people edit online. You can have desktop editing with automatic synchronization with GitHub Desktop. Um, and you know, you take advantage of collaboration and you take advantage of version control. And by the way, there's other apps like you could also just use a program like a VS Code Editor by Microsoft. It has built in Git syncing that once set up will do that automatically too. So already we're talking about multiple tool choices. And I think this is an important thing. Um, again, users can just use the built-in GitHub web editor to edit their content. They can use GitHub Desktop or VS Code by Microsoft to synchronize local copies of your online content, which is extra bonus for backups, right? Because then you have a local backup automatically in sync with your online content. You could even use different editors because it's Markdown. So multiple Markdown editors are out there. Again, you could use VS Code. You could use Adobe Brackets. You can use the, the successor to Atom because Atom is no longer actively in development, but it's been taken over by the open source community with the Pulsar project. So you could use Pulsar. Obsidian. Obsidian has gained a lot of traction recently as a really great markdown editor with all kinds of other features involved that utilize it, but you could use it to modify your docs by this files as well, or even like a web editor like Dillinger. Um, so that's a small example of how tool independent as well Doxify this is. Um, and that tool choice is for the user to make. That's the key thing. So maybe they start off with a simple editor like Adobe Brackets. Maybe they move up to VS Code. No impact in their content for Docs 5S. It's just the editor, right, that they're using. Um, so does that kind of address the, your, your, your interest there, Jim? Brilliantly, absolutely. I mean, you must, you must really like this because damn, you're good. <laughs> I'll throw another editor on the list too, Jim, because we, you know, you and I use this for some of the domains camp stuff we did with SNC. Hedgedoc is another yeah. good markdown oh, editor. Mm -hmm. Now that yeah. that requires a server component, so it's not like you're you're trading simplicity and resources. Sorry, you're trading resources in in terms of you need a server now for simplicity. In that case, you didn't really even have to understand or care about markdown because it it's uh, sort of a WYSIWYG editor for Markdown, kind of. Um, yeah, and it's it's nice. Actually, Olia, who was a keynote at Reclaim Open, was using HedgeDoc. I was like, oh, interesting. I know that app. So what's some good examples, Paul? Like, so when I want to see, hey, you know, this is great. I now know I can edit it. I now understand the theory behind it. What does it look like in action? Like, you know, oh. wh what are we dealing with, Paul? Okay, great, great, great questions. Good segue. So Thank you. let's take a look at uh, some examples. So uh, I've got some examples from the wild of people who've uh, used Doxify this and created some stuff. And I've got a couple of my own examples as well. But let's start with what people are doing. So first up, uh, John Maxwell at SFU Publishing. Um, John Maxwell. Uh, oh, great really... John Maxwell. But, I know oh, him. Great. Excellent. The great John Maxwell. Of course, you are correct. Um, and uh, John uh, wanted to use Canvas for an upcoming publishing site, but John was not too keen on the content constraints that come with the Canvas LMS. Um, <clears throat> so he is a fan of Markdown. He uses Markdown for various things. He's also a Grab user. So he was interested in using Doxify This to empower a GitHub uh, Markdown workflow where all his course content could be edited on his desktop sync to a GitHub repository that was public and embed that content into a Canvas site. So here is his public GitHub repository of his course, which by the way, interestingly, this is also accessible. Like this is also another way you can navigate through course content. <laughs> but anyway, that's a little bit of an aside. Um, this is an example of Doxify this rendered page. Uh, so no sidebar, no table of contents, just the content itself. And then this is in a Canvas site. Oh. And uh, I can go to a page here, like uh, lecture one, and look at that. So That's awesome. this is rendered markdown content embedded in Canvas. Your students should never know. Your students don't need to know. 
uh, one of my mottos for my course is one course gets one URL. So for my students, in they use Canvas too, but they also are using Docsify this and Docsify content and graph content behind that. Um, again, they would see it all in Canvas. Uh, and John actually even has Hypothesis hooked up here uh, with the markdown content <laughs> in his Canvas site. So a little bit more of a, of a uh, complex scenario, but he was, of course, quite tech savvy and he was able to do that uh, with no problem. So that's one example uh, of, of this kind of thing. And for instance, this allows John to include code blocks, something you could never do in Canvas. This is another attribute of all of my work. You break free of any content constraints in your LMS by doing this approach, whether it was be grab or Docsify or Docsify this. It allows you to break free as an instructor and, and work on any kind of content that you want and embed that in your in your site. So that's my first example. Uh, second example would be uh, Alan Levine. So Alan Levine, as you know, uh, publishes lots of open uh, materials, including WordPress themes. Um, and so he has documentation hosted on GitHub. And what Alan did is Alan was able to use Docsify this to then render that content inside his WordPress site on a documentation tab, which was absolutely awesome to see that he took this approach. <laughs> How cool. um, because again, no user needs to know this. Uh, they see this nice Docsify this sidebar, they can jump to any area that they want. And when Alan makes one change on his GitHub repo, the GitHub repo documentation is updated and his WordPress theme documentation is updated. So there is, as you would say, one source of truth and also less work for Alan uh, to do that. Of course, as Alan has joked with me, one downside, if you will, with Docs by this is that all of a sudden it gets all your readme documentation up front and center. You got to go, <laughs> oh, maybe I could make some improvements. So I understand where Alan's coming from because I'm always tweaking my readme docs now because it's it's rendered in my front end with Docs by this. Um, so that's a second example of uh, use of out there in the wild. And here's another one. Alan has also used it in another scenario on a splot.ca site where he has an index of a lot of examples using splots. But do you notice something here? Do you notice that all of a sudden all the links are red, but the links in the scrollable area are also red? Oh, this is a great example of how you can use some basic URL parameters to match your destination platform. So in this case, splot.ca has red links. Can you imagine? It would be less than ideal to have standard blue links all of a sudden in the middle of this weird area <laughs> with all your, your, your indexes, right? Borderline unreadable. A border, <laughs> borderline unreadable. And Alan wouldn't have any of that, right? So Alan set it up so he can customize the URL color, uh, link color, to match. And so it's more much more seamless approach, but it is rendered by Docsify this in the middle of this WordPress page. <laughs> um, and so again, he only has to update one index and it's displayed in multiple locations. Uh, finally, a really interesting project uh, that I didn't really know about, uh, the David Malloway at Texas A&M, they're actually working on open hardware, which is you know, something I'm not familiar with, which I thought, well, this is really amazing, trying to bring some of the processes and approaches of open source software to hardware. Um, and so he was looking for something for his team to publish their, their work in this area with this open arm project, and he came across Docsify This. So here on his GitHub repo, there's a link to, yes, you guessed it, a Docsify This uh, rendering of their materials from GitHub. Um, and so uh, again, this, so this is more like of a standalone site, but what's kind of interesting what they did is, you know, they just had this little URL, looks pretty like standard, it's a QR code, they, they like to also have a QR code for the URL. Um, but of course it expands into, you know, the full URL. And uh, uh, Jim, you mentioned that, you know, the, 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 I think it was Jim who mentioned the issue of, you know, the, 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 the longer URL that might be present. But you know, that URL can be your friend. If we look at that URL in detail, we can see an example of how you can customize things. So in this case, we're using docsify this net, docsify this.net, and we're rendering 
this um, uh, this page called uh, read. It's going to default to the README, by the way, page when you don't include the README file name. So it's rendering the README at this URL, and then uh, Dave uh, has set the sidebar to display true. You can even choose a customized fave icon. If you notice at the upper top, there's a fave icon on this site. And you can even change the browser tab title so you actually have a named site. So you can do some really nice things through that um, URL config. And of course, you don't have to do it manually. You can do a lot of it uh, through the point and click interface of Docs by this for most of the basic features, but a few you need to actually enter them in manually to further configure it. I just want to go on the record to say that Taylor is the one who said nasty URL. Oh, I've, I've always loved your URLs. <laughs> but well, I, I, you know, and I, I, to me, it's it's very similar to what you're pointing out with link color. You know, I made I made a joke, obviously, but I think the the idea that you can customize this stuff to be to fit what you need, it's really important because a tool that's too simple, a tool that's simple is probably the most important thing but if it only fits 80 percent of use cases then you know it's it, that you limit what it can be used for where we're looking at the parameters you, the url parameters that you have listed on the github page of all that's possible is really impressive to, like you'd be hard it, there's a lot of different things you can do with just a url um in this case so um i and like i said if you're one of those if in, you're in a scenario where you know uh, long URL is truly not an option for some reason. Then, then you still have the ability to go to Doxify in your um, your starter kits too. But, um, but yeah, what you can do with those URL parameters in Doxify this is amazing. So, yeah, you know, th thank you. And yeah, it gives you that flexibility. And I think the the last little example I would show you then is um, this example where this is one of my own. Uh, course site. So this is a complete site for a course. So we're looking at a multiple page site rendered by Docs by this. So I can look at uh, my course welcome. I can go to a, a certain week. I can take a look down at the content. I can go up top. I can look at my topics. I can look at the uh, creativity, go to the week that I talk about creativity, look at my readings list for the assigned readings every week, um, check out the techniques guide and explore different topics. This is all markdown file with rendering by docsifythis.net. And, and even if you notice, it's uh, branded with, SF, this is my SFU site, and, and red is an SFU color. So in this case, it's, it's red links and all that. However, however, you can, again, because you have control over those, those aspects, when you embed that same content, so this is the same web markdown page, of course, you can change the styling because it's at the URL level. It's not tied to the content. You see, it's actually yeah. tied to the instance of rendering. <laughs> so not only can you reuse the same content, you can restyle the same content to make it match the platform that you're, you're embedding it. So in this case, in Canvas, we have modules. I can click on modules. I can tap on a module. And you can see here, this is all the content. And again, showing in this case an index on the left hand right hand side uh, because this really helps students quickly jump into a certain area where that might not appear when you are rendering it as a standalone site so that's where those url parameters come into more value even than you first think because you can stylize your content with different instances to match different scenarios or platforms so can i ask you a question paul with the um open course that you just showed us. How did you get Doxify this to basically bundle up the entire site, not just page by page, right? So is there a separate Doxify this URL field where you would say, don't just take the page, take the whole kit and caboodle oh. and make it a Doxify this? Am I okay. asking the right question? You're asking a really interesting question. And all credit goes to the original author of Doxify. The original author of Doxify took the approach that all markdown files in the same folder automatically become part of a Doxify site. 
Okay, so that was the, his approach with the original Doxify project. With Doxify this, I and you might have even noticed this maybe in the URL. There's a thing called base path, and base path is the literally the base path URL of the entire repo. And then Doxify actually does what you're kind of talking about automatically. It scans the whole content. It determines all these markdown files and makes them accessible. And so then all Doxify this does is then recalculate where you want to go when you tap on a link and that file is then rendered. So using so, the base URL as the it, context for everything. I, exactly. So so the interesting thing is when I, when I went to that site and I navigated around it, there was only one initial Doxify this URL. <laughs> but yeah. then whenever I click on a link within the same site, it's it's already cached and that page will just come up. Uh, yeah. and so That's it, it works really well in that case. And so is that why you and Alan were joking about the readme file? Because that gets included as part of the of the site. Oh, I say, yeah. So so the joke there is that because Doxify this is such a good renderer of your readme file, like you could just use Doxify this to render your readme file and provide documentation in a nicer way than you could, uh -huh. yeah, just on GitHub. That means also it's out there more. <laughs> Right, people are going to be seeing it more and using it more, and then you go, "Oh, maybe you know, I can improve it." So I, I, I can understand his commentary there because I always try to improve my documentation because it's part of the user experience. That's right. It, it, it's it's so critical, uh, especially with open source projects. We have to kind of help people get into them, know what they are, how to use them. Yeah, that kind of stuff. It's doubly tricky because the README is documentation about documentation. Right. 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 Yes. <laughs> it's yeah, meta, sure. meta documentation. It's yeah. meta doc. Meta meta. Now, this is great. I don't want to cut you off, Taylor. Please. Oh, I just I just wanted to share the 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 the, the domains camp stuff that SNC did, and if um that we they they did a reclaim open session about, and we helped with some of the content for it. And I just wanted to share my screen really quick because I hadn't actually run this through Doxify this. We we made this content in HedgeDoc together as a team. And then I uh, pulled that into a GitHub repository and actually used uh, one of your Doxify starter kits um, huh. to to make it into a Doxify site with just some you know small changes for what they were trying to do. But um, Th this is uh, just a quick here. This is the three versions of the same content, right? So over on the left is the site where it mostly lives at. It's domainscamp.night.domains slash content. Uh, I know that's a really small URL. Um, but uh, And then in the middle is it through Doxify This, where I pointed it at, uh, whoops, uh, where I pointed it at uh, the GitHub repository. And then on the right is the GitHub repository itself, just, you know, with the, the web editor, basically. But it is kind of amazing uh, that you can click through these links in the same way, um, and they uh, they even uh, render. They will go to the right web pages and everything. It's it's f fascinating to me that 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 works so well. So, that's, um, yeah, that that's really great to see. And actually, that's a good reminder for me. This does go back a bit uh, again to your question, Jim. When you asked me about multiple pages and how that kind of happens on the front end. So I should also mention, because uh, Taylor's demo brought it to my attention, um, while Doxify will automatically get all those markdown files ready to be rendered, if you want a sidebar with the multiple pages of your site, you do need to do that manually. So you, you because you need to decide Doxify finds all these files, but Docs, so I can't assume that, oh, okay, all these 10 pages are the top level in your sidebar, and then these pages are the second. No, it won't do that. So you do have to create a little sidebar file. So that's something I should follow up with your question. So if you wanted a multiple page site, it will be automatically rendered. It would be clickable like Taylor showed. But if you wanted a sidebar, with multiple pages, yeah, you would need to do that manually. It's basically just a list of pages in Markdown, and that's all you need to do, and then everything else taken care of. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 quite impressive, and and seeing the demo really brings it home because 
you know, I've been aware of your grav work. How long have you been really digging into Doxify? Is it in the last year or two? Or how long have you been kind of, Doxify seems to have kind of emerged from your grav work in a really organic way, as you said at the beginning. So what's that process been like and where are you in it? I think uh, my original full release of Doxify This was probably maybe even less than a year ago, I think. That makes sense. Um, the Doxify starter kits, I think my first release was around 2020 or so. Um, and so, you know, I, I still update and maintain my Doxify This starter kits to match, like, the styling updates I'm doing with Doxify This because I want to be able to do what Taylor just showed as well, like being able to keep page fidelity between Doxify This and my Doxify starter kits. So, and, and my grab work also is, is getting updated, but my focus right now, no doubt, is Doxify This uh, because it is the lowest barrier of use. I mean, that, that really comes down to that. And I'm seeing pickup, you know, every project has velocity. And again, this is a niche project. To me, you know, this is never going to be a huge project um, because, you know, people who only want to use Markdown, that's a smaller number of people. People who want to do certain things like what, what Docs by this enables. So it is a niche project. But saying that, I have noticed that the velocity of pickup is much greater than either my Grav work or my Docsify work earlier. Because people yeah. can get going faster. <laughs> I mean, and, and it's designed to be that way by, by intention, right? Is that, you know, take a URL for a Markdown file, paste it into a field and tap a button. You have a web page. So, you know, that, that is, to me, that's got traction. And so to your question, currently, it's a, it's a very, you know, um, method, kind of like a process to refine that you know, to refine the stylization that you can do with your pages, to refine the documentation. I'm always working on my documentation to improve that. Um, and to learn from the people now using it in the wild. You know, so so that's that's a great thing. And Discord is a, has been awesome. Doxify has a has a big Discord a presence. Um, recently, the maintainers of the project gave me my own Doxify this channel, which was awesome of right. the team to do. Um, and so now I'm starting to get more direct contact uh, with people like David Malway from Texas A&M. This is how we got in contact with each other. And as a UI, uh, you know, user experience uh, consultant and interaction designer, to talk directly, and I'm sure you both appreciate what I'm about to say, to talk directly with the people who use your products and services is so invaluable. And so now it's this dialogue I've got going and I'm learning more about different use cases and when I can making adaptation stocks by this. Um, you know, one example is now docs by this will support zoomable images now. Uh, you know, this is something that I never, you know, didn't come across my radar, but De David Malway has a lot of cases where they want the people to be able to zoom into diagrams of open source, open hardware projects. So I was able to, by a URL parameter, enable zoom images now so one tap your image full size on your page tap again and close um, and you know you got to be careful about that cycle because i'm sure again you appreciate this too you can't endlessly answer all feature requests you have to really be critical about what does this feature request what's behind this what's the goal and is this goal aligning with my goal of the project and if it is, then I will go after that. And Zoom Images was an excellent example of that. It's a natural progression for a tool that renders open content. Um, and so it was a, a great addition to have. But that's a little example of the kind of things I'm working on now and, and just trying to spread the word. And again, I really appreciate this opportunity with you folks to do that uh, because it's great to get kind of word out on the project uh, and for people to see you know, what it can do uh, for those who want to work in Markdown and, you know, have the content that would work well to do that. It's amazing to see how organic your development is from Grav to um, the starter kits to this, too. And that's really powerful. And again, this to see that kind of penetration and have people using it and people picking it up, that you was know, why we do this stuff. So that's really cool to hear. I loved, you know, this was a selfish session i wanted to hear it from you know the developer themselves how this works you know what's the logic behind it and uh, i really love how simple and beautiful it looked and john maxwell and your course i mean it's 
it's a gorgeous core site that you know provides that information and gives you some control over it outside the course and talk about open and republishable it really hits on a lot of also core technical flexibilities you know that i think of when i think of open right i'm not so concerned about whether it's licensed but whether it's reusable and repurposable quickly and easily and that really was remarkable so thank you paul well thank you very much that's, that's awesome to hear thank you so much all right. And with that, we're going to close out episode 39 of Reclaim Today. Thank you, Paul Hibbets. Thanks, Taylor. Thanks, Taylor. Big fan. <laughs>